Today, we're going to be talking about Google Arts and Culture. So to begin with what we're going to be talking about today, we're going to go over what Google Arts and Culture is, how you can use it on your laptop, and some different categories and the functionality of the platform. So to begin, as usual, with kind of an overview and definition of the topic, Google Arts and Culture is an online platform which provides users with high resolution images, videos of artworks, cultural, cultural artifacts from partner cultural organizations throughout the world, and also provides some opportunity to have some fun with some of their built-in games. It features content from over 2000 leading museums and archives, so you can access it right from your computer. So now how to access Google Arts and Culture from your laptop. You want to enter artsandculture.google.com into your web browser of choice. And then once you get to the website, you can explore different artworks and galleries, cultural landmarks, play games. You can follow your favorite museums, get fun facts, and learn more about all of the different things it has to offer. Now the website is organized into a few different categories that you can navigate through using the menu in the top right hand corner, but to begin with the most important page, the home center. So on this home page, you will be able to interact with the art pieces in many different ways. So you can learn fun facts, you can use AR to see it in your house, you can zoom in to look at details and it's going to be very high quality and high resolution. So it's like seeing it in real life, just on your screen. And you can also take selfies inspired by the work, which is really fun. Now you're also able to see a highlight, which is known as the story of the day. And it focuses on a positive story pertaining to an artist or an artwork. And it gives you background information, in a short story like interface. So you can kind of follow along and learn more about a certain topic and it changes each day to keep you interested. Now you also have the opportunity to follow your favorite museums by selecting the discover 3000 plus collection button. And from there, you'll be able to see all of the museums available. You can view them in alphabetical order, or you can even view the ones that are nearest to you by selecting the map. So there's lots of different ways you can navigate through the website. Now you can also view the top picks of the day, and this is going to be featuring different continents. So there may be guessing games, select art pieces, geographical locations with historical value, architectural facts, and more. So something that I really love about Google Arts and Culture is that it's there's always something new and exciting to find and it changes each day and there's lots of new information to learn about. You can also see different creative ways um, that they offer that allow you to explore. They provide traditional methods of viewing by alphabetical order or you can go to museum maps and see exhibitions near you. You can also use the time travel function to allow you to use a sliding scale to let you browse artwork throughout time. And here are just some screenshots taken from the website. One of them is called Five Ways to Explore. So as I mentioned, A to Z art, so in alphabetical order, the museum map, nearby exhibitions, time travel, and also the color wheel, which is really cool. Importantly, the homepage also highlights endangered history and provides a new category that's been released more recently to raise knowledge about sites that are in danger with the National Trust for Historic Preservation. For example, here's a screenshot from America's Endangered History, and you can see some of the sites that are in danger and you can kind of learn more. So the site is also going to help to raise awareness about important causes, which is another great aspect of Google Arts and Culture. On the homepage, you can also see fun facts about things, including present date and also over the course of history. 
This ranges from notable figures, artworks, and even more. You can also look for specific topics, art, and museums using the search feature in the top right-hand corner of the website, which is located at the magnifying glass. So here we can see today in history. So this is kind of what happened in the past on the given day of the year. And it says on this day in 1825, George Ines was born. And then these are some of the artist's artwork. You can also play fun games. There are some notable ones called Find Your Art Doppelganger and In Rhythm with Nature, which allows you to interact with art in a fun way. As the title suggests, you can find art that looks just like you and it will generate images similar to whatever image you capture of yourself. And the next game, In Rhythm with Nature, provides a moment of calm, which has been inspired by the work Flower Clock by Carl Linus. So there's lots of ways to stay engaged with the website. And it's kind of like you can never get bored when you're using Google Arts and Culture. Now you can also explore architectural landmarks. And this will be in detail with a 3D model. And you can browse iconic cities as well as their monuments in 3D. You can also play guessing games. So for example, they will show you a piece of an artwork and then you have to click on the images to find out more details and facts about these pieces. And it's called Guess the Artwork from the Pieces. You can also do an activity called Zoom Art. So you can view details of artworks in high quality and learn new additional information about the work itself and the life of the artists as you look through the interactive display at a zoomed in lens. You can also explore different museums by going to the Museum Explorer, which allows you to go through a tour of the available work in kind of a virtual walkthrough. So it's kind of like you're actually in the museum in real life, gives you a 360 view of everything around you. And you can really imagine what it's like to view and appreciate the artwork if you were in a real museum. Additionally, the homepage highlights hidden gems and famous artworks that are from across the world and they're recommended for you section. From here, you can learn more about the artistic influences of artists. You can play guessing games and you can just kind of learn more through um, having fun and you can even get more insight into the creative processes of artists. So it's really an educational site that teaches its users through fun and engaging content. You can also view national parks that are located around the world and learn about their history and different tools in their collections. And there are lots of different times and locations of the places available and their historical importance. For example, you can look through different collections of national parks, and then within those collections, you can see different items that are associated with them, such as cooking utensils or metal. So it's really interesting to see how the kind of human population has evolved over time from the perspective of national parks. The homepage will also offer a variety of interactive exploration tools. So you can explore through time and view a variety of artifacts in different time periods. And then you can either view them by time, color, or public interest. You can also explore artworks in high definition to see details that you may have missed previously. And you can dive into different cultures from around the world by clicking on keep exploring. So you can learn even more about the work by seeing more information about their communities, heroes, stories, musical sounds, language, and more. So it's really diving deeper and deeper into the experience of viewing and appreciating artworks by really getting a holistic understanding of all of the different factors that went into the lives of the artists and the creation of the pieces. 
Now there's also the explore category. And here you can view and engage in the different games available by clicking on the experiments category. If you click on art camera, this is where you can access available artworks that you can zoom into for high quality definition of their details. You can also go to the 360 mode of the explore category, and there you can find art at all different angles. This includes space tools, natural history, fashion, and tours of geographical locations. There's also the opportunity to go to the street view mode, and this is where you can find tours that are famous for landmarks and sites. Some of these actually include exhibits that are now closed, museums, notable figures, houses, and more. So it's a really great way to access different exhibitions and um, museums that are across the world. And what I love is that some of them aren't even um, available to the public. So it's really, this is the only place you could access them. You can also view the different art categories. And these organize the work based on artists, mediums, movements, historic events, historical figures, and places as well. So if you want to go and you just want to look at artists specifically, then you can go to that category. And this is also where you can find the modes to explore by time and color for the artworks. You can also view different themes and collections that they have available. So themes may be things such as the ocean, trailblazers for arts and culture, and more. And this is also where you can find the weekly highlights, including fun facts about artworks and insights to fashion museums. You can also view the topics that are popular, and this may include movements, mediums, and location. Next is the play category, which is many people's favorite. And here you can find all of the interactive games that Google Arts and Culture have to offer. You can filter them by the categories of music, puzzles, crosswords, coloring, trivia, and adventure based on the type of game that you wanna play. And you can even interact with the art by clicking play with your camera, which allows you to try on filters and kind of adjust the art in whatever way that you want. You can also click on nearby to see places, exhibitions, and museums that are located near you. Now there's also the option to go to the favorites gallery and also the sidebar on the website. So you can kind of get all of your favorite works into your own gallery by liking selected works. And you do this by clicking on the heart button which will be located beside an artwork or a collection or a certain gallery. And then you can go to the sidebar, which will show you all of the categories and your achievements. So as you explore, you get badges. So it's kind of like a little prize for going on the site and learning more about the art. So now we're gonna go into a live demonstration of the website, just so that we can explore it together and learn more about Google Arts and Culture. So we're going to go to a web browser and search up Google Arts and Culture. And from there, you can just click on the first link that pops up. And then this is gonna be the homepage that you see when you first go onto the website. You can also see in the top right-hand corner that we are on the homepage. And here are just some of their featured things that they have going on right now. If you want to explore Japanese museum in particular. And here you can just find some more general information like today's top picks, story of the day, if you want to pick a painting, etc. So you can kind of scroll down. A lot of the things that change each day, for example, today's topic, will be found on the homepage. So if you're really interested in kind of following along with Google Arts and Culture and what they have each day, this is definitely the page that changes the most. So you can just come here maybe in the morning or whenever you want to see what's changed on a day-to-day -day basis. Then you can also click on Explore in the top right-hand corner. 
attachment here, you can explore through different kind of filters. You can go to highlights. So kind of the things that are of people's favorites on the website. You can go to different categories. If you wanna look through artists, mediums, art movements, etc. And then you can also go through time and color. If you continue scrolling, there are even more ways to kind of search through and explore the website, such as themes, collections. You can read the weekly highlights, popular topics. So there are lots of different ways to find all sorts of things on the website. You can also go to the play tab where all of the games are located. And you can again, search through music, puzzle, crossword, coloring, trivia, or adventure. And when you find one that you like, you can just click on it and it will open up and you can, you can read a little summary of the game once you launch the experiment. And if you wanted to favorite the game, so if I really enjoyed playing it, then I would click on this heart here. And then it says, add it to your favorites in your profile. And then if you wanna go back, you just click on the arrow. You can go to the nearby section and you can browse things that are near to you. So this is if we were in Paris, you can see all of the different options that they've got nearby. And you can look around, you can zoom in too, if you wanna see a specific museum. And then lastly, the favorite section, which is great if you find something you really like and you want it to be there when you come back. Here's the game that we just favorited together. And we'll also sort it into different categories. So this one was an experiment. So it's one of the games, but I've also favorited a story. So it's called 10 Museums for the Musically Minded and it's an online exhibit. And also some topics here. So I was interested in Vincent van Gogh and also the Louvre. So you can really favorite anything on the website, artists, museums, collections. And then once you return to the website, it won't be so difficult to navigate to find it. So it's really great that you can save it all in one place. And then I also want to draw your attention to the three lines in the top left-hand corner. Here's another way that you can actually navigate the website. You can go to home, explore nearby, as well as profile and any achievements that you receive. And then you can go to look at different art collections, different themes available, experiments, which are the games. You can go to different artists, mediums, art movements, historical events, historical figures, and places. So if you find it more simple to use this sidebar to navigate, that's also a really great option. And it's always gonna be there for you to use. So that does conclude our presentation for today. We wanna to thank you so much for listening and joining in. And if you would like to learn this lesson with a Cyber Seniors Mentor, you can always go to our website or call our phone number to register for a one-on-one -on -one phone session. And we do also host weekly tech drop-in sessions from 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern time on Thursdays. And everybody is more than welcome to join in. And we would love to see you all there.